load complete. Stage two locks load is closed out. Beautiful shot of Pad the uh, the crew tower to the next. Falcon 9 is in startup. So at that call out, Falcon 9 is now on autonomous internal control. Coming up, we'll hear from the launch director, see if they are, will give their final go for launch. LD is go for launch. So with that, Falcon 9 teams ready to go, vehicle ready to go, weather and range ready to support. Why don't we listen in to these final 30 seconds of terminal count? T minus 30 seconds. Stage one flight press. T minus 15 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, we're taking that Starlink orbit to its first, Starlink satellites to its first targeted orbit and eventually a circular orbit. We actually just throttled down for maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q, on those nine Merlin engines. We'll expect to hear that call out here shortly. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. So call out there for having gone through the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's when the loads on the vehicle are the highest from the combination of our velocity, but increasing while the density of the atmosphere decreases. Now coming up in just about a minute, we will have three events happening back to back. First will be main engine cutoff or MECO. That's where we'll shut down those nine Merlin engines. You can see the plume expanding from them on the back of the rocket here. That'll be in preparation for stage separation. Now, stage separation is where the first and second stages will separate. First stage will continue on a parabolic trajectory towards the drone ship, while the second stage continues on to the final event, or second engine start number one. That's where that Merlin vacuum engine will ignite. And once it lights up, it'll propel the second stage along with Starlink satellites into orbit. Actually heard earlier that we've started chilling on the turbo pumps of the Merlin vacuum engine to get it ready for that full flow of propellant and oxidizer. So coming up just about 12 seconds from now, expect to see Miko, its main engine cutoff, then stage separation, and then at about T plus two minutes and 45 seconds, second engine start number one. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. So there is successful stage separation and second engine start. You can see the grid fins deploying on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the first stage. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Merlin vacuum engine starting to glow brightly with the heat of that combustion reaction. First stage making its way back towards Acquisition of planet Earth. Maryland. Coming up here should be fairing deployment fairing shortly. Confirmed. There was a call out on the nets and a beautiful shot of the Starlink satellites. You can see on the right hand side there a little bit of planet Earth. Actually you can see a fairing half there trailing away. 
Now, as a reminder, we will be attempting to recover both the fairing halves today on our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief, that are also stationed at the, in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage heading towards its targeted drop-off orbit. Now, while that's happening, the first stage is actually going to execute two burns to make its way back to Earth. You can see right now that we are actually pitching the first stage vehicle to try to get those Merlin engines facing uh, towards the atmosphere. Signal Bermuda. Those periodic uh, gas clouds that you see along the first stage are actually from our attitude control system. And once we get to the top of the Earth's atmosphere, we'll ignite three of the nine Merlin engines for entry burn. That'll help slow down the first stage as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And the second of those burns will actually happen much closer to touchdown on the drone ship. That's the landing burn we'll, where we will ignite just a single Merlin engine at the center of the set of nine. And that'll slow down the vehicle rapidly before hopefully a soft touchdown on our drone ship. On the right-hand side of your screen, continuing to see the Merlin vacuum engine continuing to burn. This is a pretty long burn for the Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, this will be going until about T plus eight minutes Second stage on and 48 trigger. seconds. Call out there from the navigation officer that the second stage is on a nominal trajectory at this point. So flying right down the middle of the bars. Cool shot from the interstage on the uh, left-hand side of your screen that's looking up at where the second stage previously was, looking out towards space, because those Merlin engines are pointed towards planet Earth. Coming up in about a minute from now, we'll expect to see that entry burn start. Uh, entry burn will expect it to last about 20 seconds. Again, that'll be three Merlin engines, and usually you can actually see the plume uh, sort of creeping up the side of the rocket since the vehicle is right now uh, both going thousands of miles an hour. At this point, the first stage has reached the highest point of its orbit, the apogee. So it is on the downhill portion of the uh, of its trajectory. You can see Earth getting bigger and bigger. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. Startup of those three Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Second stage continuing to burn nominally. Expected loss of signal, Cape. Stage one, entry burn shut down. So with that, we will continue on the first stage to apply some attitude control from those uh, attitude control thrusters. And as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker, the grid fins will actually start to gain most of the control authority. Second stage on nominal trajectory. And uh, the, the grid fins will continue to fly Falcon 9 in, creating, giving us aerodynamic control. Looks like we just lost the link as it re-enters there. Here's a shot of the drone ship. Again, that's 624 kilometers off the east coast of Florida, awaiting first stage for a landing attempt. Second stage continuing to look good. That glow that you see on the nozzle extension is normal. That's just from the, the heat of the combustion reaction uh, radiating out to space through the nozzle. Now, part of the reason why the second stage has such a large nozzle is to try to get the most out of the propulsive gases that we're producing in the propulsion chamber. And so that allows the second stage to be a little more efficient in the vacuum of space. Coming up here, we expect to hear a call out for landing burn start on the first stage. Shortly after, we'll expect to see landing leg deploy, and then hopefully a touchdown on the drone ship. Terminal guidance. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Looks like right in the center. That marks 61 successful recoveries. Third time for this booster. 
Now, coming up about eight seconds from now, second stage is also going to shut down its engine for second engine cutoff number one. Keep an eye out for that on your right on the right hand side of your screen. Seco one. And successful shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. Navigation officers will be assessing whether we have ended up in the right orbit. And uh, most of the way up, we were right down the middle. Nominal orbit insertion. It's a good call out there. We're in the first of two planned orbits. Now, the second stage is going to coast in this orbit for about the next 30 minutes. We're actually going to take a break while it's doing that, but we'll leave you with an animation that shows exactly where the stage is in this coast phase. And we'll see you back here at T plus 42 minutes for reignition of the second stage's engine. See you back shortly.